Hey everyone, welcome back. Ready for another deep dive. This time we're going to untangle this whole world of FGF signaling pathways. Oh yeah. They're complex, but I promise they're super fascinating once you start digging in. We're gonna be using this article from Assay Genie. It's called FGF Signaling Pathways, Unraveling the Complexities. Great article. Yeah, and we're gonna to try to unravel some of those complexities ourselves today and uh, get this these pathways, they kind of shape everything. Pretty much. From how we develop, like literally in the womb, to how our bodies, you know, fight off diseases and stuff. It really is remarkable how these pathways are like this network, this communication system. Mm. And it's all happening inside our bodies, you know, just influencing yeah. tons of cellular processes. It's crazy. So, okay, let's back up for a sec. What are FGFs in the first place? Think of them like tiny little messengers, right? And they're zipping around carrying instructions for our cells. Perfect analogy. Yeah, those messengers, they're scientifically known as fibroblast growth factors. Yeah. There are actually 22 of these proteins in the FGF family. And each one has its own role, you know? Yeah. They direct all sorts of things that cells do. Yeah. Growth, becoming specialized cells even, like programmed cell death. 22 different messengers. It's like a whole, I don't know, a cellular party happening inside us, each one with its own, like, playlist. Uh-huh. Yeah, something like that. It's a really amazing system, very, very complex and orchestrated. And to do their job, to deliver these messages, they have to interact with special receptors. These are on the surface of the cells called FGFRs. Okay, so it's not just a free-for-all, like any FGF can't just get into any cell. Right. It's all about um, finding the right match. Each mm -hmm. FGF has to bind to its specific FGFR, like a lock and key, you know? Only the right key unlocks the right door. Makes sense. So then that binding, it sets off this chain reaction inside the cell. The article, it calls it a signaling cascade, right? Yep, exactly. It's this cascade of molecular events, almost like um, dominoes, you know, one event knocking into the next and the next. And that ultimately leads to some specific response from the cell. And sometimes these FGFs, they get a little help from other molecules. Like they need to bind to their receptors better. Kind of like having a friend hold the door open, you know? The article mentions heparin sulfate proteoglycans. Yeah, those are important. And within this cascade, there are all these crucial molecules. Take FRS2, for example. It acts like um, a switchboard, I guess you could say. It connects that FGF signal to different pathways inside the cell. And each of those leads to a different outcome. It's amazing how complex it is. And the article mentions three major pathways that get activated a lot. Resmapake, PI3KKT, and PLSO. So these are the guys ultimately controlling how the cell responds to that FGF message. That's right. Each pathway, it's like its own control panel. Each one dictates a certain set of activities for the cell, and they're all influenced by those initial FGF signals. So this is all well and good, but I want to know, what does all this signaling actually DO? Like, where do these pathways actually come into play in our bodies? Well, that's where it gets really cool. Because FGF signaling pathways, they're involved in so many things. Yeah. Everything from how our bodies develop to how our tissues and organs are maintained throughout our lives. We're talking about real world stuff here, not just abstract cellular processes. Oh, for sure. I think a great example is wound healing. Okay, I'm listening. You get a cut. Right. Mm. Well, FGFs are some of the first ones on the scene, like first responders. They're released yeah. right at the injury site and they start, uh, they direct cells to multiply and rebuild that damaged tissue. So they're like tiny little construction workers. Exactly. Part of the body's built-in repair crew. That's pretty awesome. And that's just one example. They're also really important for angiogenesis. That's the process of forming new blood vessels. And that's crucial for everything, from how we develop as embryos to wound healing, even, uh, even tumor growth. Wow, so these tiny little messengers, they're orchestrating all these vital processes. And that's just the start, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got these little construction crews, these FGFs running around, building blood vessels, fixing up wounds. What else are they up to? Well, you know how intricate skeletons are. You can thank FGF signaling for that too. They're crucial for bone development, making sure those bones grow to the right size and shape. It's wild to think about these microscopic things building something as complex as, you know, our skeleton, show how everything's connected inside us. Absolutely. And it also shows how important it is for this signaling to be like perfectly tuned. When things go wrong in the FGF signaling pathways, well, that's when problems start. Okay, so what happens when the, uh, when the orchestra's out of tune? What happens when the signaling gets disrupted? Think of it this way. Too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. If the FGF signaling gets like overactive, it can cause cells to grow uncontrollably. 
And that's, well, that's a big part of cancer. Yeah, if those growth signals are constantly on, it makes sense that cells will go kind of crazy. Exactly. And on the other hand, not enough FGF signaling can also be a problem. The assay genie article, it talks about skeletal disorders, things like certain types of dwarfism. Those can happen because of disruptions in bone growth signaling. So it's all about balance. Too much or too little FGF activity and things go haywire. Right. And it's not just cancer and skeletal issues either. The article mentions a bunch of other conditions. They're linked to problems with FGF signaling. Things like metabolic diseases, like diabetes. Wow. So these pathways are pretty important for like almost everything. No wonder scientists are trying to figure out how to use FGFs for, you know, treatment. Oh, absolutely. And that's where things get even more interesting. Researchers are trying to manipulate FGF signaling to treat all sorts of diseases. So if there's too much signaling, you block it. And if there's not enough, you try to boost it. Yeah. In theory, it's that simple. Yeah. But of course, it's much more complicated than that. Remember all that complexity we talked about? Well, that makes it tough to develop really targeted therapies. Yeah, all those different FGFs, the receptors, the pathways, all that stuff. It's like trying to untangle a giant knot. Uh huh. Very good analogy. And all that complexity means that, well, there's a lot of room for error. Like what, what kinds of challenges are scientists facing? Well, one of the biggest ones is drug resistance. Mm -hmm. Let's say you develop a drug yeah. and it blocks a specific FGF pathway, the one that's causing a tumor to grow. Sounds great, right? Yeah. The problem is cancer cells, they're tricky. So they just find a way around the blocked pathway. Exactly. But you want to start using a different FGF or activate a completely different pathway. And they end up achieving the same thing. The tumor keeps growing. It's like plugging one hole in a leaky boat and then another one pops up somewhere else. Exactly. And then there's the whole issue of side effects. Right, because FGF signaling affects so many things. Messing with it could have all these unintended consequences. Yeah, it's a bit like using a sledgehammer when you really need a scalpel. Huh. a drug that blocks FGF signaling in general, well, it could end up messing up important processes in healthy tissues. And that can cause all sorts of side effects. So the trick is to develop therapies that are super specific. They need to target only those pathways involved in the disease without affecting anything else. Exactly. And that's what a lot of the current FGF research is focused on. So what are some of those strategies they're using? Any promising breakthroughs on the horizon? It's a tough challenge for sure. So what are scientists doing to try and overcome these challenges? Any, uh, any light at the end of the tunnel? Yeah, definitely some exciting stuff happening. One really cool area is um, developing drugs that target specific FGF receptors. It's a much more precise approach than, you know, just blocking the FGFs themselves because those combine to multiple receptors. Right. So it's like instead of silencing the whole orchestra, you just quiet down the one off-key instrument. Exactly. And some of these targeted therapies are already looking good in clinical trials. There's one called uh, erdafitinib. It targets an FGFR that's involved in some types of lung cancer. And it's actually been shown to shrink tumors and help people with these specific mutations live longer. That's amazing. So by zeroing in on those specific receptors, you can develop much more targeted therapies and hopefully fewer side effects. What about other approaches? Well, another interesting area is looking at those downstream signaling pathways we talked about. Instead of going after the FGS or the receptors directly, scientists are trying to like modulate the activity of key molecules within those pathways. So it's like fine-tuning the control panels. Exactly. One example, uh, there are drugs being developed that inhibit the PI3K-AK pathway. That one's often overactive in cancer cells. And these drugs, they've been effective in treating a few different types of cancer, like breast cancer and leukemia. So it sounds like there's a lot of progress being made. For someone listening who, you know, might not be a scientist, what's the big takeaway here? I'd say the main thing is that these FGF signaling pathways. They're incredibly important for keeping us healthy. They're involved in so many things, and when they get disrupted, it can cause some serious problems. But the good news is scientists are learning more and more about them, and they're developing new treatments to target them, even with all the complexities. It's really mind-blowing when you think about it. All we've learned about these tiny little messengers and how they control so much of what happens in our bodies, it really shows you the power of you know, scientific research. It does. And remember, the assay genie article is a great starting point, but research is always moving forward. So if mm -hmm. anyone wants to dig deeper, there's tons of info out there. You can explore all the latest breakthroughs and the future of FGF research. That's a great point. Well, I think that about wraps it up for today's deep dive. We've covered a lot. 
from the basics of FGF signaling to the challenges and the potential of uh, developing new therapies, hopefully you all have a better understanding now of how complex and amazing these cellular communication systems are. And maybe even a little bit more curious to learn more. The world of FGF research is full of exciting discoveries. Thanks for joining us, everyone. And until next time, keep those brains buzzing.